today we're talking to St Albans City manager Ian Allenson down at a very windy Wiltshire where the Saints have picked up National League South Point with a 0-0 draw away to Chippenham Town. Overall Ian, not a game of great excitement, the conditions probably didn't help, the pitch dry, bobbly, the wind was extreme, but it's a game which maybe we should have won it in the end. I felt so David, yeah, I think, um, I think we've had three really glorious chances to, to, to win the game. Um, whether you can blame ourselves for, for not taking the opportunities, but certainly their keepers saved all three of them. But I felt on at least one or two, two of the occasions we, we should have buried the ball and put it in the back of the net. But yeah, as you said there, with the conditions like it is, it's been extremely windy, um, like gale force at times. And I think players were really more concerned about getting over the ball and making sure they hit the target. And as you said, at the end of the day, the goalkeepers made the save, so we've not missed them, we've hit the target. But there were three glorious chances that, for me, should have, should have seen us win the game and, and come away from here with three points. Because uh, going into a game, you were struggling to get a full squad on the bench after Dave Deju's injury during the week. He's out for the rest of the season, which you'll probably tell us about in a second. And now you've lost Zane Banton as well. Yeah, it's going to be tough because we need to, as I say, we're, we're down to bare bones. We've fought 15 today with two goalkeepers. Um, we've obviously got Clovis, who's, who's uh, still out injured, and hopefully another week of, of treatment will get him back for next Saturday. David um, Noble sees the specialist on Monday, and hopefully we can get an injection into him, which hopefully might resolve the situation with his foot. Um, and David Dehaju, obviously, with the, the, the injury on Tuesday night, which we found out is it's, it's a lot worse than we first expected, that he's actually broken the finger quite badly. And he's in plaster now today, and he has to have the operation on Monday morning, but they've said he's out for eight to ten weeks. And now with Zane, obviously, it looks like... Um, I don't want to... Uh, say too much on it because it's 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 a poor for me it's a poor challenge um, and the lad could be left there with a broken leg let's hope not but he's in quite a lot of pain now um, we need to get him off to the hospital and get him uh, sorted as quickly as we can uh, as we say that leaves the squad very thin any moves to strengthen it hopefully so we've got uh, one or two seven days in at the moment um, which hopefully get one over the line Monday or Tuesday of this week just to make us a little bit stronger as I said, we've got to look at the injured players first and foremost, where we are with them, but probably going into next weekend, I'll probably need to bring one more in. Um, so, you know, we're going to have to go back to, to, to the club and see what we've got available to bring some players in because, you know, we're in a really good position today. The additional two points today would have been great to put us two points off the players, but we're still four points off the players with seven games to go. So, and with the players playing and, and fighting as much as they are at the moment, you know, it would be wrong not to have a go at this with, with six weeks of the season to go. It wasn't pretty because the conditions weren't ideal for football today. But uh, do you want to look at one or two of the uh, chances which maybe we should have stuck away? James Ewington had a good one. Yeah, and as I said, it's just a shame for James because it'd be great for him to score and get off the mark. I mean, as we said before, he scored in a calendar year. I think he scored um, uh, 90 goals, I think it is, or in 18 months he scored 90 goals. And it's probably the one real chance he's had while he's played for us. Uh, and he done it well. He done everything right. He got over the ball in, in, in terrible. You know, windy conditions, as we said, and the ball would have been flying around all over the place as it come to him. He's hit it on the volley. He's got over the top. He's hit it great, and unfortunately, the keeper's come out and made a great save. He's hit him on the knee and flew away. But again, you know, if he miss kicks that or kicks it into the ground, it's one of them that might have gone into the back of the net, and that was like two minutes to go in the game. So, but you, you've got you've got to give the credit to the goalkeeper because he's, he's made himself nice and big. He's made the save. Um, it's also with Solomon's shot. We've also had Ben. Uh, Wyatt's shot, the keeper's made a good save and also Sam Merson's one at the near post where he's kicked it and he's managed to hit the keeper's arm and he's managed to dive on it second attempt so we've had four or five really good chances today to win the game and as I say the keeper's made a save on all four of them so give him a bit of credit you know you walk away from here tonight disappointed that we haven't picked up all three points. The keeper was making his debut, I think you said earlier they signed him yesterday and he walked off with their man of the match, fair enough. Uh, no chance of um, Dean Snedka doing it for us because uh, we snuffed them out at the other end really. We did, we defended really well um, as I say, you know, we just got a... Dean really didn't have a lot to do, I think he had one save in the first half uh, but again on, on conditions like today there's going to be mistakes and I think the one in the first half led because we give the ball away quite cheap but he's made a good save but he hasn't really had a lot to do the whole game. You know, there was one or two incidents in the box in the second half, I think one of their players was throwing himself all over the place. Referee for me again didn't really get to grips with some of the black acting that went on. And yet we get, you know, a couple of cautions for, for, for silly little fouls and they're frustrating and as I say I felt the worst tackle on the game was on Zane and, and nothing happens from that side of it. But as I say I've said a bit before and I wouldn't you know I wouldn't want to be a referee but sometimes you have to you have to look at some of the decisions that, that, that are made. 
and, and, and some of the reasons why that we get frustrated on the sidelines because you see things happening and you know when their fellow threw himself down in the box for me that's an ideal opportunity to pull the yellow card out but you know we, we have a player book because he makes two two silly little tackles in the midfield and, and, and it, it, it's a count-up process and he gets a yellow card so that's football at the end of the day we have to all accept it as I say without referees and lines I mean, we wouldn't have this game um, but we have to get on with it even though uh, I'm probably as frustrated as anybody today. Well, frustrating is a good word for not winning that game, but if we look back at seven points from the last three games, and next Saturday home to Gloucester City, who haven't been travelling well this season, it's an opportunity, if we put our minds to it, to keep the pressure on the sides above us. It is, David, but as I've said before, you've got to, you know, they're in a relegation scrap and they're scrapping for every point they can get. And I think if you look at probably the last five or six games, I think there's been sort of five, five draws and a win. So I think they've drawn with Hamilton again today. So it's going to be a tough, tough game. We know if we if we don't keep the ball well enough or keep possession of the ball and, and pass it properly uh, and allow the opposition to, to, to get in front, we're going to cause ourselves problems. So, you know, we've got to make sure whoever we play and you know we make sure we get ourselves right for the game first and foremost I've got to get the squad back to a to a decent level um, because it's probably since I've been at this football club it's probably the worst year I've had in terms of, of injuries and long term injuries and it's a shame because we go right back to October we lost Richard Shosil, we lost David Noble in, in, in December we've lost now Clovis uh, not Clovis uh, David Deheju and obviously now we're going to have to see where we are with Zane so you know, there's four or five, and Tom Bender had that at the start of the season, where I think he broke his uh, he's broke his foot there. So it's been it's been a tough tough season in terms of injuries. But the players for me have been absolutely brilliant today. You know, they've come here on a really difficult condition, um, defended really well, um, tried to play football. And as you said before, a difficult difficult pitch, difficult conditions. We tried to play it, and we created some really good chances. Just unfortunately, we haven't come away with. Um, Lovely, thanks so much Ian. And uh, fingers crossed that the news on Zane is not as bad as had been feared earlier. So Saints next in action next Saturday, that's the 23rd of March when Gloucester City visitors Clarence Park, National League South, kick-off is at 3pm.